Sports betting has exploded in popularity over the last five years. In the United States, where I live, this is mainly due to the Supreme Court striking down the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act in 2018. This act had restricted legal sports betting to Nevada and Native American reservations since 1992. Evidence of this explosion is everywhere. Total monthly revenue for legal bookmakers in the U.S. alone has gone from tens of millions to billions of dollars since 2018. I can't watch a game or even turn on SportsCenter without being bombarded by betting information. Since 2019, 17 NFL players have been suspended for sports betting, compared to just one the previous 50 years. This year, the Washington Commanders even added a sports book in their stadium. With such a dramatic increase in popularity, many people, especially sports fans, are interested in making money from sports betting. For such people, there are two very different approaches to take. The first approach is qualitative. This means making your decision without any statistical indicators or rules to determine whether you will place a bet. Most bettors take this approach because there's a low barrier to entry. Simply pick who you think is going to win. If you're already a sports fan like me, this should seem pretty doable or even easy. But this method requires strict discipline and intimate knowledge of the game you're betting on. Lacking these two factors, most bettors end up losing money. Then there's the second approach, quantitative betting. In this method, bettors use numerical indicators to minimize risk and remove bias. This technique is either expensive or time intensive, and it's usually both. Because of this, most bettors stick to the less successful qualitative method. I first got interested in sports betting in 2017. Since then, I've drained multiple accounts and lost hundreds of dollars with the qualitative method. Not yet ready to give up, I decided it was time for a change. I was going to try the quantitative approach. My favorite tool to use for betting research is Oddshark because they have so much data and information in one place. While looking at Oddshark, I noticed that the line often changes substantially between the open and the game time. Sometimes the favorite even switches teams. Like here, this game between the Eagles and 49ers set to happen this weekend. The Eagles opened as the favorite, but have currently moved to be underdogs. Had we known this would happen, we could have had a no-risk guaranteed win before the game even starts by betting on both teams while they were underdogs. So we found a pattern that we think we can exploit, but we're going to need some data to actually do anything with it. I could use Python to scrape this data from Oddshark, but it only goes back to 2017, and the format it's in makes it cumbersome to scrape. A unique page for each game means I would have to pull up over 500 web pages to get the data. So I looked around on the internet for a different data source. I quickly found this site, where they sell the data we're looking for going back to 2007. The only problem? It's $264. That's way too much for me, so I poked around on the site a bit to see if there was anything else I could access. Eventually, I stumbled across this page, which shows Moneyline data for week one going back to 2007. I quickly found that I could modify the URL to get different weeks, as well as spread and total data. Data on this site is very well suited for scraping. To start, there's a unique web page for each week in the NFL season. This means we only need to pull up 36 pages for the whole scrape. The pages contain tables for each season going back to 2007, with rows for each game. Finally, all pages, tables, and rows are structured in the same format. I knew I wasn't going to find any better data to scrape. It was time to write the Python script. I chose to start by focusing on spread and total data. Building web scraping apps is something I do fairly regularly, so I already have some standard code set up to begin with. Let's go through it here. To start, I import tools I need from Selenium and WebDriver packages. I've also pasted in a class I've written to make using the WebDriver easier. I've written a test at the bottom that retrieves the URL for week one spread and total data, and I have a boolean to control whether the test runs. I verified that this test grabs the correct web page. Now we could build our scraping app up from here. I start by setting up classes for each of our three data structures, the web page for the week, the table for the year, and the table row for the game. I move between each class as I go, adding methods and attributes to perform the scrape. All along the way, I add, modify, and execute tests as necessary. I chose not to show these tests being executed because that would make this video drastically longer. If you'd like a more detailed video on how to use Python to scrape data from the web, leave a comment below. If you pay attention to the structure of the code, you can see it's an iterative process that starts with building a feature in a class in the middle of the file. Then I go down to the bottom to add or modify a test. Sometimes I bounce back and forth between the class and the test as I refine the outcome I want. I start by writing retriever functions. 
The web page needs to retrieve the tables, and each table needs to retrieve its constituent rows. Finally, each row needs to get its constituent data. I store the data in two separate JSON files and leave the cleanup for later. The most important step in web scraping is getting the data while you have access to it. Time is of the essence, because you never know when a site will change its structure or hide the data you're accessing. Once you have the data stored locally, you can take all the time in the world to put it in whatever format you want. Now let's go take a look at how I structured the data. At left is the main folder for this project. If we go into the data folder, we see subfolders for each year, which in turn have 17 subfolders, one for each week of the NFL season. In each of these folders, I've numerically indexed lines and odds data for each game. At right, we can see what the lines and odds JSON files look like. For each game, we want to combine these files to be a single row in our final Excel file which will contain all of our data. Now let's go code that up. I like to write data to JSON files because they work so easily with Python dictionaries. If you're a regular Python coder like me, then you know dictionaries are the easiest and most flexible way to store labeled data. Like I mentioned before, web scraping is split up into two stages. In the first stage, we simply want to get the data onto our computer. We don't care how it looks. Once we have the data, we could clean it up however we want. My goal here is to clean it up so that we have the same Excel file that's for sale on the website for $264. Then, I want to put it on GitHub so that other data-minded bettors can get it for free. I'm finishing up the code to write our Excel file here. Now let's go take a look at the file. At right, we have the Python script I've written for cleaning up the data. Top left is my Ubuntu terminal. I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux. At the bottom left is the folder for this project. You can see I've removed the Excel file that was there earlier. Now if we run our Python script, the data file should appear. Let's wait a second for it to finish and refresh the project folder. And there it is. Now let's go check to make sure it's in the right format. I've parsed data from the first entry in each JSON file to get the home and away teams. I've also added columns for week and year the game took place, which should make querying the data easier when we're building betting strategies. Otherwise, Columns correspond with entries in the JSON files for that game. This means that we have opening and closing spreads, money lines, and totals for every regular season game since 2007 in a single Excel file. We've obtained $264 of data in exchange for just two hours of coding. If you want to make money betting on sports, the best strategy is to use a quantitative approach driven by data. Unfortunately, this is hard for most bettors because data is expensive and building a successful model takes a lot of time and work. In this video, I've presented a solution to the first problem. We don't care if the data is expensive because we can get the data for free if we have some Python skills. Even if you don't know the first thing about programming, you can get the data for free by going to the GitHub link in the description below. Finally, if you're interested in watching me code this up in real time, you can watch live streams of me working on this project here. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see streams and videos of similar projects. Thanks for watching. Tribe of Noise Music.